I'm Phoenix Gray, and welcome to Lit RPG Happy Hour, the podcast where I sample lit RPG and alcoholic beverages. Feel free to drink along if you dare. Today's game will be a change of scenery. I'll be reading a sample of Shattered City, Call of Reality Book 1 by Aiden Collier, and I'll be taking a shot of Bacardi Superior every time I encounter a new chapter uh, or a scene break. This will continue until I either get to the end of the sample or have to tap out because I've drank too much. If you want to follow along, pause this video and download a copy of the book sample at the link below this video, or you can just take a drink whenever I do. As disclaimer, I do not read every book that I drink to. I also do not leave Amazon reviews for books as I feel that it's conflict of interest since I am also a lit RPG author. This is all for fun and to help spread the word about lit RPG and all of these awesome books. Having said that, let's go ahead and get started. I went ahead and pre-poured my, uh, my first shot uh, just for the sake of brevity. Uh, I have a uh, orange juice chaser here, so um, and I'm also reading on my uh, my desktop. So if you see me squinting or leaning forward, it's because my contacts have been bothering me today. So I might look a little weird, but anyway, here we go. Uh, starting with chapter one, it is chapter one, so we take our first shot. Oh man, holy crap! All right. The line at the job center moved at a snail's pace. Roland shuffled forward with the others. He clutched his tattered notebook as he stamped his feet, trying to warm himself. He had been coming here every day for the last three months. His previous employer had cut him loose as they had finally managed to catch up with their competition and buy an AI-based packing system. The job before might as well have been temporary. His contract only lasted for a few weeks before it was replaced by a Generation 3 android. He tried to calculate how long the city's worker, Stippen, would be eked out over the month. Last month, he was forced to cut his meals to two a day to get by. He was lean now, and it wasn't from working out. That was a waste of his energy. An auto cab hovered by its repellers, splashing an icy puddle up the legs of his faded jeans. He glared at it for a moment before shuffling forward once again. The neon light from the job center sign flickered overhead, adding a surreal clarity to the near twilight the city lived in. Ever since the second industrial revolution, work had dried up for any not highly qualified. Roland was one of those. He got by at school, but didn't make the cut for the state-funded higher learning. The neo-ludites furiously pushed back scrambling AI memory banks and inserting false trolley problem data in vehicles. The military made short work of them, and the government later introduced a statutory income to everyone who lived in the city. At first, it worked, but, e but each year, inflation outstripped the increases. There were few companies who still used physical labor. By physical labor, they really meant unqualified people. The more the technology advanced, the fewer jobs were available to humans. Roland mulled over his life choices, wondering where he could have been if he had managed to hit the percentile level needed for the higher jo status jobs. A few more terms, tutoring, and physics, and he might have earned it. He finally reached the door to the office. The edge of the frame shone light blue and buzzed from heavy use. He pulled up his sleeve to scan his implant as he entered. Without that, he wouldn't get a single penny, and those two meals a day would seem like the days of luxury. Inside, the line split into ten different queues. Roland checked the overhead boards and the number on his chip display before heading to queue number eight. Thankfully, this seemed to be the fastest moving line. Either they had a lot of basic jobs or they had none at all. It didn't matter to him. There was no way that he could change the outcome and make a difference to his prospects. The floating hard light screen showed platitudes from the city politicians promising retaining schemes and workfare schemes. He glanced at the repeat count on them. It was in the thousands for every video. He turned to look at another set of screens, which listed stock market charts. Every single one of them was doing well. The scrolling headline was a record high for the tenth year in a row. He scowled. He had worked for one of those broker companies a few years back. They had laughed at him and called him Human Bot. They even refused him a name badge to save money. He hadn't lasted long, and he never thought he would. The desk was close now. He could hear the usual angry arguments and the snap of plastic-sheet documents as those in the same position as him shed their remaining anger at those behind the desks. It wouldn't be long before those people were on the other side of the desks either. Looking right, he could see the tenth desk was being converted already. Roland was up next. He stepped backwards to let the angry woman who had been in front of him storm off. Approaching the desk, he looked at the forlorn expression on the clerk's face. The forced smile greeted him, and he sat in the faded plastic chair. 
Sliding his plaster sheet record onto the desk, he flashed back an equally empty smile. Any jobs for me today? Roland asked the vestiges of hope, trying to swim to the surface. The clerk scanned his record and reviewed the information on a hard light screen to their side. I'm afraid that there are no jobs for a skill class today, Mr. Mellers. The hopes had sighted before it had even broken into any true motion. None at all? I'm afraid not. They looked closely at the screen. I have some bad news for you as well. The hope turned to fear and rose further. Your skill level means that with a lack of work for three months, your stipend will once again be reduced. Why? Roland replied, his heart dropping. New City Regulation 3986F states that anyone who does not qualify for work after three months get a reduced stipend if above level E, the clerk said, with about as much motion as a machine that would soon replace him would have. But you're the one not giving me work, Roland bit back, his face warming up as his anger rose. If we, do, if we do not have jobs available, we can't give them to you. They're private means of getting work. Perhaps you should pursue them if you wish to raise your stipend again. Roland scowled at the clerk. I'll see you in the line. Roland scowled as he grabbed his plastic sheet record and stood up. The chair tipped and clattered to the floor. He ignored it as he stormed out of the building. The air felt colder, but he suspected it was just the lack of heat sinks inside that made him feel that way. He shoved the documents inside his coat and stuck his hands in his pockets. Looking both ways for auto cabs, he crossed the road. The other side of the street bustled with life, most of it living behind glazed eyes and 40-yard stairs. A rainbow of flickering neon lit his way as he trudged towards his flat. He stopped walking when he arrived at the district crossroads. He stared along the boulevard. Translucent neon lights shone across Teflon-coated micro-silk dresses and fiber-steel suits. Laughter and music rose and fell as doors to bars and restaurants opened and closed. He narrowed his eyes as he watched people spending credits without a thought. Pulling his hand out of his pocket, he opened it. He was clutching the last of his credits for this month. It wasn't many, but he could buy a beer in an upscale bar, one that didn't have door droids at least. He considered the way into his district and watched the lights blinking their staccato ambience across the bedded puddles and ragged garments of his block. He looked back at the bright lights and laughter, then spun on his heel and walked towards them. As he drew closer, people turned to give him looks. His clothes didn't look that bad. They were just older and not high fashion. That was enough in this district. He scanned the numerous bars and boutiques. Every single one of them had door droids. He carried on hoping that security would be laxer the deeper he got into the upscale streets. About 30 minutes, he, reali he realized that would not be the case. He stopped and decided to walk home. As he retraced his steps, he realized that he would have to go through that sense of embarrassment again. Looking around, he ducked into a side road and headed down it, hoping he could turn into another one soon. The buzz of the main thoroughfare lessened the further he went. As he checked the establishments, he noticed one that didn't have a door droid. Trying not to look too obvious, he angled towards it. He kept his cap low and stared at the pavement right in front of him until he came to the door. Without hesitation, he pushed it open and entered. He looked up and realized where he was. It was a recruitment office. Just his luck. He walks for the best part of an hour and ends up in another job center. Roland looked around, seeing several people eyeing him. He shuffled to the side and studied the signs. This wasn't any old recruitment center. It was a military recruitment center. Roland felt panic setting in as his muscles went rigid. He wanted a job, but dying for the elites who created this mess really didn't appeal to him at all. There was a line in the sand he drew on these sorts of issues. He glanced the door and then shuffled his way towards it as he pretended to read the hard light screens. The ubiquitous screens were placed liberally around the office, which helped. As he glanced at one showing a smiling youth in a synth steel combat uniform, a shadow fell across him. He looked up. Can I help you, sir? He stared at the chiseled feature of a soldier with a smile that looked like it had been carved from marble. No, thank you, Roland stammered and searched for a way past the recruiting officer. Come now, son. You wouldn't be in here if you didn't want to at least see what we had available. Well, actually, I walked in here by mistake. The officer glanced at the service crest etched into the glass of the windows and then back at Roland. I doubt that. I noticed you have a pack of documents in your jacket. Your portfolio, I guess? Roland peered down at his jacket, not seeing his documents poking out. He stared at the cr recruiting officer and caught their eyes focusing in and out. Their faint purple glow shone from the underside of the peaked cap they wore. X-ray vision. Great. There is no way out now. Oh yes, I err. Uh... Roland stuttered as he pulled the documents from inside his pocket. He flattened them and handed them to the recruiter. The purple light changed to green and the eyes focused on the sheets. 
Hmm, well, I might be able to do something with you. Follow me. The recruiter moved away towards the desk at the back of the office. Roland followed more to keep his documents in sight than because he wanted to join the military. The officer sat at the desk and called up hard light displays. One faced Roland and the other faced the officer. The display was blank until the recruiter looked the documents over several times. An image of the documents appeared on the screen. The recruiter tapped at a few of the buttons on his side of the desk. The image morphed until it showed a form. His dad had populated the form. Options turned green and others turned red. A counter appeared at the side of the screen. It started with a high number and scrolled down. As Roland watched it fluctuate, the recruiter spoke again. Could you scan your chip here, please? He held out a small device that was nondescript. Roland scanned his chip and the form scrolled once more. Other information joined the numbers at the side and scrolled up and down in a dance of algorithm output. It finally settled on 10 for every number. There's good news for you. You're eligible to join us. Roland went cold. There was no way he could say no and not have it recorded. There was no way he wanted to say yes either. Saying no would cut his entire stipend and he wouldn't be able to say yes to anything else even if he wanted to. What as? Roland asked, frowning. Why, as a standard soldier, of course. Thankfully, you are Category D. Category E, and you would only be eligible for menial support tasks. I assume I can decline the offer? Roland said. That would be your choice. Remember, you will have your stipend removed until you find another job. If you refuse, that is. It was as Roland had feared. It left him with a choice that wasn't a choice. Join the military or starve to death. Military it was, then. All right, we're now at chapter two, so I'm going to take another shot. I've got to say that I'm really liking the story so far. The the um, building of the, the scenes around in the world is really good. Um, so yeah, so far so good. So here we go. Round two. All the way up. If you're wondering why I'm using these fancy glasses, it's because uh, I currently don't have a shot glass here, but I'll be moving soon and probably buying one if I continue to do this, which I plan to do. So, cheers to anybody else who's following along. Oh my god, that's horrible. Oh god. Also, you should probably know that I don't usually shoot alcohol. I'm only doing it for this, and it's probably the only time anybody's ever going to see me do it, so. Oh, trusty orange juice. Thank god. Alright, chapter two. Here we go. Roland glanced over the documents laid on the screen. The recruiter pushed a small pad across the table. Roland stared at it. What is that for? They require you to scan your ID chip before we can begin the full sign-up process. Roland pulled up his sleeves and then hesitated before scanning his chip. The device made a single high-pitched beep and the green light flickered on. Excellent. Now, if you follow me, I shall help you work through the test to decide if you are what we, are, we need at the moment. What if I am not? Roland asked as he got up to follow the recruiter. Well, you'll go on the list until there's a position for you to fill, or until we have helped you reach the required level. From what I have seen of your records, this should merely be a formality, though, Mr. Mellers. The recruiter reached a door at the back of the office and scanned his chip. The door slid open, and the recruiter stepped back, gesturing for him to enter. A strange, hazy field obscured Roland's view past the doorway. He sucked in a deep breath and stepped through the field. The door slid closed behind him while he looked around. He found himself in a fancy elevator, judging by the polished surfaces. A light flashed on and a blue field screen, I'm sorry, a blue field scanned through the elevator. Roland stood still waiting. The light reached the wall opposite the door and then stopped. A sequence of beeps echoed around the enclosed space, followed by a green light set on the wall that blinked on. Roland looked at it and then the elevator moved. Roland turned towards the door, waiting to find out where it would take him. His stomach dropped as it shifted from upward motion into sideways motion. The elevator moved swiftly but smoothly, stopping quicker than Roland thought it would. The doors opened as soon as the elevator had settled and revealed the same haze he had seen before he entered. He stepped through it into the room beyond. The doors hissed as they closed behind him while he tried to get his bearings. A large counter split the room down the center. It separated him from a series of booths, all of which had a hazy field concealing their contents. Two recruiters stood behind the counter, waiting. These soldiers wore uniforms that were practical and less parade dress as the guys downstairs had looked. They both looked at him as he approached. Good evening, sir. Please scan yourself here, the one to the right said, gesturing towards a device similar to the one downstairs. Roland did as they asked him and noticed a hard light screen appear above the counter. The second soldier scrolled through the information before nodding to the first. If you would like to come with me, Mr. Mellers, we will find you a booth. He lifted a piece of the counter that didn't look like it should move and stepped back. Roland walked through and stopped on the other side as the soldier replaced the piece. 
He walked along the corridor between the booths until he found an unoccupied one. He opened a glass door and let Roland in. Please sit at the desk and wait for further instructions that will appear on the screen. Roland turned to thank the soldier, but they had already shut the door. The glass shimmered, and then the hazy, the hazy field fell across the outside of the booth. Warily, Roland approached the desk. It had a simple brushed steel design. A similarly brushed steel seat sat in the center of the longest side. As he sat in the seat, a hard light screen appeared in front of him. Good evening, Mr. Mellers. This test is to make sure that you will be adequate for our needs. Please scan your chip on the side of the terminal box. Roland jumped as the voice came out of nowhere. The box on the table that projected the screen was small, but had the same device he had encountered before prominently the same device he had encountered before prominently built into the side. He once again scanned his chip, wondering how many times he would have to do that before he got more information. Thank you, Mr. Bellers. Now, look at the screen. Roland stared at the screen and waited. His records scrolled by just too fast to read, but slow enough for him to recognize what they were. When they reached the bottom, a message box popped up on the screen. Click yes to proceed, candidate. Roland clicked the yes button without hesitation. His records disappeared from view as six boxes appeared on the screen. The boxes formed a grid three across and two high. The categories were basic commands, training test, record exchange, phys record ex exchange physical exam, practical test, and FAQ. He considered them for a second before reaching for the screen to touch the sixth box. Just before he touched it, the voice piped up again. Please touch the box labeled basic commands, please. Roland shifted his hand and clicked the box that had been highlighted. Roland's selection enlarged to fill the entire screen. Multiple choice questions scrolled into view and filled the box. A short video will precede each question. The video will ex precede each question. The video will explain the information and you will then receive a prompt instructing you to answer the correct option by clicking on the requisite choice. At a glance, Roland wondered what the actual point was. These answers seemed super simple. The first question read shooting at the enemy. Its answers were shoot, do not shoot, or ask for clarification. He reached out and pressed the small icon above the question. A prompt appeared on the screen. Please take the VR headset that is within the drawer to your left and place it on your head. Roland, point out, Roland pulled out the headset and put it on his head. It wasn't as sleek as the ones he had seen displayed in the shops he had passed on the way here, but it looked serviceable if used well. It felt cumbersome but didn't shift when he turned to the side. Roland shrugged and clicked the finished button. The screen and the goggles clouded and they revealed the battlefield. Roland looked around and saw several bunkers and a destroyed building. He could feel a rifle in his hands. As he stared forward, he noticed notification. Do you see a battlefield? If so, say yes. Roland complied and the notification disappeared. Next, he heard a, seri he heard a series of sounds from the starting of a car to a voice saying one, two, three. A new notification appeared. Did you hear the sounds? If so, say yes. Once again, he said yes. The test will begin now, Scro scrolled across his vision. Soldier, I want you to look at that destroyed building, and then I want you to tell me if you can identify any enemy soldiers. Roland glanced at the building and identified a trio of soldiers standing on the upper floor. Yes, I can see them. Shoot those soldiers, came an order. Roland went to lift the gun, and the system stopped him. A notification appeared. Number one, shoot the enemy, or number two, do not shoot the enemy. Please choose, this, please choose the corresponding number to your answer. Roland said one, and it highlighted the answer. Is this your final answer? Yes, Roland replied. The battlefield disappeared. His vision faded back in and formed into the room he was physically in. Roland shook his head. Well, it said, sorry, I skipped one. Your answer is correct. Please complete the other questions. The lowest pass rate acceptable is 100%. Roland shook his head. It'd be hard not to get 100% if they were all that easy. He followed each of the commands, getting the answers right every time. Every command was basic. The commands were in the range of run over there and get down. Roland wondered why they bothered. If you couldn't understand simple commands as basic as these, you probably weren't allowed to go out with someone to help you, without someone to help you. After completing the first test, Roland moved on to the second test. This test was just as simple. The instructions boiled down to pull the trigger and load your gun after being taken through the process. Roland clicked on the third test. This section is to add your records to our database in full, and for you to agree to the rest of the training that we require for you to be a soldier. We cannot proceed to any further part of the test unless you agree to every option. You will be asked to sign multiple documents. After you have completed this section, you will be considered a member of the military, and you will then have that confirmed when your training is over. The screen changed to show multiple files. 
Roland reviewed the first handful, noticing that they were the standard records he had brought in. His only task was to, co to confirm that they were correct. The second batch was a set of permissions for them to access all other records that the government held on him and the documents for his property he either owned or lived in. He shook his head at that. Anyone rich enough to own a property wouldn't be in here joining the military. Not as a private, anyway. He clicked and scrolled until he reached the final set of documents. The last set of documents are their permissions for medical examinations and for you to tell us of any medical conditions that would preclude you from service. You will need to read and accept every page as they are given to you. Roland did as he was asked. They weren't much different from the ones he had filled in many times before when he actually managed to get work through the job center. He didn't bother reading too carefully. They were always the same. You had to agree to the demands or, to the demands or leave. He had made the, ma the mistake before. Oh my god, I scrolled and I lost it. It couldn't be that bad, could it? The second to last document caught his eye, though. It gave permission to add extra chips and hardware to his body. What exactly did they need to add? Roland assumed it was some sort of military ID chip, separate from his personal one, and something that allowed them to replace his limbs if he was blown up. Being blown up wasn't on his agenda, so that made little difference to him. He signed them off, and the last document appeared. One was a single page. This one was a single page. It read like a disclaimer for cookies on a website. It asked if he agreed to join the military and had understood everything that had been said. Roland thought for a second. He tried to click on the FAQ page that was peeking out from the side of the document. A notification popped up. If you click away from this page, your session will end and they will remove you from the facility. Do you wish to proceed? Roland clicked no and sat for several for a few seconds. He didn't have much of a choice and clicked the accept option on the form. Congratulations, Private Mellers. You are now part of the military. This was his life now. He didn't know for how long yet, though. Your next test is the physical exam. A full physical exam will be conducted after this test. Test. This is a preliminary exam to test basic attributes. Private Mellers, proceed to the wall at the far end of this room and place your hands on the pads that are within the wall. Roland looked at the wall and couldn't see a place for his hands to go. He stood and walked up to the wall. He turned when he reached it, putting his back against the cool surface. A grating sound filled the air as two small pads slid out of the wall. He placed a hand on each of them and jerked as a jolt of electricity went through him. Roland flinched and tried to pull his hands away, but they were held in place by some sort of field restraint. Breathing deeply, deeply to relax himself, he stood straight and looked at the terminal. We will now take your basic physical attributes to add to your record. We will also take your blood so that we can analyze it, came the disembodied voice. He felt a sharp pain in his finger as a needle pricked him. A blue light, the same hue as the one in the elevator, scanned from the top of his head to his feet and back up again. Once the scan was completed, the restraints on his hands lifted and he took a faltering step forward. Return to the terminal, Private, came the voice again. Roland rubbed his wrist and sat down once again. He watched as the screen created a wireframe form of him and then covered it in a skin that looked like him. Vital statistics appeared down the side of the screen, including height, weight, and his blood group. He had no idea how they had taken his weight, but it was right from what he remembered. Before you complete the practical test, you will need to read the FAQ. Once you've completed that, click on the practical test and you will be retrieved by one of our recruiters and taken to your training bay. Roland hit the FAQ button. He assumed that there would be information about the documents he had signed. The initial questions delayed his pay. His or detailed his pay delayed would be bad. The initial questions detailed his pay. His qualification put him as an infantryman with the rank of private. They would only give him a promotion if his record in action and the point system that were in use said that he could. The document showed no other way to get promoted. Roland had his doubts. Point system, Roland thought. Odd, but considering the system they used for the battles, it made sense. It sounded efficient, he supposed, though he was unsure how they would be calculated. Unfortunately, the FAQ didn't explain that either. The salary had an additional component. It was room and board. That was a nice bonus, Roland thought, as he scrolled to the term of service section. His term of service was three years, three years of combat time. What was combat time? Surely just three years would be accurate. Again, the FAQ was infuriatingly vague. He scrolled through the rest. It was mainly very basic stuff, like all supplies would be provided by the military, not taken from his pay. Also, any implants would be removed at the end of his service. He had had that happen before when he worked in the lab. It wasn't a pleasant experience, but wasn't the end of the world. He was eager to see what he was getting himself into, so closed the FAQ window and clicked on the practical test section of the menu. The screen faded and the hard light softened before disappearing. 
A recruiter will be with you shortly, the disembodied voice declared, and then the lights faded to a pale yellow. The hazy field dissipated, and he heard the door unlock. He, be he, dis he didn't have to wait long for the recruiter to turn. Follow me, Private. Your physical training will begin in the next room. All right, we're now to chapter three. I'm going to pour another shot. If you haven't noticed, my reading skills have degraded because I am buzzed. Uh, keep in mind that uh, I actually haven't eaten in like two days because I'm on a fast, so this was probably a really bad idea. But uh, I'm going to keep going with it anyway. And uh, if at any point I start slurring so bad that I just can't continue, I'll stop. I think I'm actually almost out of Bacardi. But fear not, I have a, a bottle of Parrot Bay behind me. So... Bottoms up for anyone else who's following along. Oh, that is horrible. Yeah, I'm drinking a lot more orange juice this time because it's weird, you know, the more you drink, the less you can taste, but I can still tell that it's horrible. All right, again, so far I'm, I'm actually really enjoying this read. So we're going to go ahead and continue on with chapter three. Roland followed the recruiter to a door at the end of the row of booths. While Roland expected a door, this was a hatch with a wheel for a handle. The recruiter spun the wheel, and Roland heard a hiss as the hatch disengaged. Roland frowned. Why would they need a hatch? Surely they would need more than a single room to complete practical training. He had loved watching old war films when he could access them. A favorite was Full Metal Jacket, and that is what he expected. Ideally, less suicide in the heads, but something a tad more physical than what they had here. He walked through the hatch and the recruiter trying to... He walked through the hatch with the recruiter trying to concentrate as the hatch clanged shut behind him. The recruiter tightened the seal on the hatch. Roland faced forward to see a hatch on the other side of the small room. A light went red on the wall above their heads, bathing them in a warm glow. A hissing sound started near their feet. Roland glanced at the flooring to see that they were standing on a metal grate that had pipes running beneath it. One of the pipes gave off a cloud of vapor. Roland looked at the recruiter with panic flooding him. The recruiter stared at the far wall as the cloud of vapor enveloped their feet. Oh, is this meant to happen? Roland asked, pointing to the vapor as it covered his feet. If it weren't meant to happen, I wouldn't be stood here ignoring it, would I now, Private? Unless you think I'm some kind of stupid. Do you think I'm stupid, Private? Roland was taken aback. He bit his tongue. Add the grammar. Um, no, sir. Sir, do I look like an officer to you, maggot? He said without even looking at Roland. Well, no, er, rec recruiter? Then do not presume that you can promote me. The gas had reached their waist and the recruiter still hadn't even twitched. Roland tried to emulate the stance and waited for the gas to fill the chamber. It took far too long to Roland's mind. Why were they doing this? Was it a type of psychological test? At least the recruiter sounded more like he had expected him to, to now. The spraying sound changed to that of a giant vacuum in an instant. Something sucked clouds of gas that had formed back towards the pipes, and the light changed from red to green. The recruiter waited until the last dregs of gas had been sucked back into the pipe before moving. He turned the wheel on the sealed door moments after the vents sealed and pushed it open. The room beyond housed a series of pods with cables running from them. A group of five at the end were still open, but they had sealed the rest shut. A group of, a group of soldiers milled around with data pads, checking on the displays and the cables. The floor of this room matched the floor of the small airlock-style chamber. Roland followed the recruiter into the room as they approached a group of soldiers at the end. This is the latest recruit who is qualified for training, he announced to a soldier that was standing by an open pod. Has he been fitted yet? No, sir, he is not, the recruiter replied, coming to attention. Then you should take him through to the next room, shouldn't you? Sir, yes, sir, the recruiter bellowed before saluting. The officer returned the salute and returned to checking readouts on the pads. Come with me, private, he said to Roland. Roland followed as he led him along the rows of pods. What did they mean by fitted, and what were the pods for? Roland was about to ask when the recruiter abruptly turned to him. Private, enter that room there so they can fit you. Once you're fitted, return here. Yes, recruiter, Roland mumbled as he entered the indicated doorway. This room looked more like a surgery than a technological powerhouse des uh, displayed in the other room. There were medical personnel waiting as he entered. Private, come with me, one of the white-clad personnel said, and took him to a bed before pulling a curtain around it. You're here to be fitted, I presume. Yes, Roland replied. I have a question, though, Roland added as the doctor turned to a small cart that sat by the bed. Go ahead, private. 
he said before he opened the container and retrieved a device, a device about the size of a fist. What do you mean by fitted? Fitted with the additions needed to plug you into your pod, of course. My pod? Roland said, backing away. Yes, your pod. Now lay face down on the bed, please. Roland looked at the bed and it looked like a massage bed with a hole for his face at one end. I'm not sure I understand. Why do I need to get into a pod? Did they not explain what being in the military actually means? The doctor asked, turn to face Roland. Not really, I just assumed it was like it was in old films. The doctor laughed. We're a little more advanced than that. It's a bar it's barbaric to kill people. I'm sure you know. Now we send people into VR and have them fight there. So, like a computer game? Yeah, sure. Whatever makes you happy. Now, could you lie down in private? We don't want to keep the recruit waiting, do we? Mullen climbed on the bed hesitantly. The doctor pulled down the back of his collar and pushed his head all the way into the hole. As his head sealed the hole, the pressure increased on his cheeks. Don't be alarmed. We have the bed hold your head so that we don't get this wrong. Roland tried not to panic, but his heart vibrated the soft surface of the top of the bed. The doctor's hands were on his neck again, pulling his jacket down until it was below his shoulders. I am attaching your implant now. This shouldn't hurt too much. It's like an injection. Roland tensed his cold metal pressed into the back of his neck. Two tendrils of cold metal wormed their way inside its clothes, following his spine. Another two wound around his throat. A final set worked their way through his hair. He grabbed the handles underneath the bed and squeezed his eyes shut, concentrating on that pressure instead. Stabbing pain was like the stabbing pain was like an injection, an injection with a large blunt needle, needle administered by a sadist. Holmes' breath hissed over his neck as he breathed in hard. The pain increased, making his eyes hurt. It appears as a cold cloth wiped across the back of his neck. A tingling sensation made his jaw twitch. Something trickled down it before dripping on the floor. I'll finish. The bed will release you, and you can rejoin the recruiter. Roland heard the curtain move as the bed released his face. He reached around and touched the rear of his skull. There was a smooth device tucked up to the base of his skull, which ran down between his shoulder blades. The tendrils he had felt crawl across his skin were all attached, too. Roland sat up and swung his leg over the side of his bed, shrugging his jacket up over his shoulders again. He stood feeling no different. Roland couldn't see the doctor anymore, so wandered back to the recruiter in the other room. Has your implant taken private? The recruiter asked. Yes, recruiter, it has, I think. Roland replied, touching it once again. Excellent. Now you need to get changed into your uniform so that you can complete your practical training. The recruiter led Roland to a small hatch on the other side of the corridor. This room was like a standard locker room from a gym. The recruiter stood at attention by the door by the door as Roland entered. Place all clothes and personal effects in one of the provided lockers. You will then put on your uniform. Roland did as they ordered. He didn't have much in the way of personal effects. Not only that, he was still dazed from the large hunk of metal that they had attached to the base of his skull and spine. Removing his clothes, he folded them neatly and put them on one of the shelves before taking the uniform. It was a dark green one piece. The only decoration was a patch on the arm that said, Army, in large letters. He zipped it up and turned to the recruiter. Lock your effects away and hang the key around your neck. Roland did as they told him. You're now ready. Come with me. The, recru the recruiter led Roland back to the officer that they had first met when they entered the main room. Recruiter is now prepared for training. S Recruit is now prepared for training, sir, the recruiter bellowed. Very well. Go about your business and I shall see through the rest of the protocols. The recruiter saluted and then returned the, the way they had entered. Roland watched him go and then turned to the officer. You will need to get into the pod, please, Private. Roland obeyed. He didn't know what to expect. Nothing had been what he had imagined so far. Then again, he had never met anyone from the military. Assuming it would be the same as it was in the movies was stupid when he really thought about it. He climbed inside the pod and lay down on the bed in its center. Hold on to the handles and brace yourself, Private, the officer said, looking at the pod. Once again, Roland did as ordered. The officer closed the pod, and the pod constricted to take up the remaining space around the bed. Two handles rose from the sides, which Roland gripped. The last thing he saw was the officer peering in the small window at the front. A sharp pain flooded his body and then disappeared as quickly as it had come. When Roland opened his eyes, he was no longer in a pod. He was stood in the middle of what looked like a camp. Glancing around, he saw others in a similar state of confusion. Just as he was about to walk over to one of the other recruits, a soldier ran out across the square to where they were standing. Listen up, all of you new fodder! 
We are here to teach you how to be real soldiers. None of that simple point and click you've just done. This is going to be as real as the world you knew. Now get in line, maggots, the soldier bellowed and stared at every single one of them. Now, this was more like what he had pictured, Owen thought. All right, we're about to uh, approach chapter four, which is the last chapter, but because it's still a chapter, I'm going to take another shot. Uh, I've got to say out of buzzness right now, I'm feeling about a... Oh my god, I ran out of Bacardi. And it just tripped on my keyboard, which sucks balls. I'm feeling uh, probably, if, if I had to do like a one to ten scale, oh, reaching for my parrot bay. Uh, oh my god, why is it so far away? Uh, I'm feeling about a uh, 7 of 10. I'm pretty buzzed right now, like I again, because I haven't eaten them in almost two days. But uh, that's a little bit more than I should be drinking, but this is the last shot. So uh, again, so far so good. I think this is a, an incredibly entertaining read. Uh, I like it. The, the, uh, the building, the background, the environments is, is very well done, which I really like. So uh, here we go. Here's another shot. If you're playing along, take one with me. Pear Bay didn't make that better. I don't even think the orange juice made that better. Alright, chapter four. They formed up into two ranks. The entire group numbered 20 in total. They were all wearing the same style of overalls. Rowan had received before entering the pods. Wollen stood in the second line, and then something struck him. No one had the implants. He checked the back of his neck and realized he didn't either. Stand to attention! Now! The soldier that had run out to meet them bellowed. He pitched his, his pitch was monotone, and the words he delivered were in a staccato beat. Wollen snapped to attention the best he could. His body took over and tidied up his feet. That was odd. A notification popped up in front of his eyes, which we'll never find out what it was because that was actually the end of the sample. So, um, like I said, this was actually a, a really interesting read to me. I enjoyed it uh, immensely. Uh, if you would like to read further, it is a Shattered City, Call of Reality, book one by uh, Aiden Collier. You can check out the link at the bottom of this. Um, I will probably not be posting a, another one of these videos, videos until next week. And it looks like next up is going to be Break by SM Green. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and... Uh, you know, check out that one when I post it. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good night, a good day, a good week, a good weekend, whatever time it is that you're watching this, and I will see you guys next time.